Okay, back to the Gemara and Shabbos. Um, okay, the Gemara says like this. There's a lot of interesting Gemara, so we're just jumping around. I'm in Rabbi Yishuv ben Levi. Rabbi Yishuv ben Levi says, Noshim Chayov is ben Ner Chanukah. Women are obligated in the midst of Ner Chanukah. Now, Gemara says, why? Sha'afein ho yubayisi anes, because they're also part of the miracle. So the Mepharshim explained as follows. Why wouldn't women, women be obligated in their Hanukkah? Because it's a positive mitzvah connected to time. We know any mitzvah connected to time, women are not obligated in like Lulav and Sukkah and the biblically Shafer not and a lot of other mitzvahs not. But uh, even though, so nevertheless, the Gemara learns, I'd say by Kiddush, women are obligated in Kiddush. Why? Because in the same Pasuk, in the Aseris Adibis, it says, sanctify Shabbos, don't do work. So the Gemara learns out, in the same Pasuk, it's a Hekish, it's called, the fact that in the same Pasuk, the Torah says, don't do work, make Kiddush, and women are obligated in all negative commandments. So therefore, the Gemara learns out that women are obligated in Kiddush. The same thing, one second, the same thing with eating Matzah and Pesach, because in one Pasuk says, don't eat chametz, eat matzah. So again, because women are obligated in all the negative commandments, so when it says don't eat chametz, they're obligated in that, and in the same passage, the Torah says eat matzah. So therefore, women are obligated in eating matzah. So really, the Gemara says, women really shouldn't be obligated in Hanukkah. Why are they obligated in Hanukkah? Because they're also part of the miracle. Same thing with Purim, by the way. The Gemara says, why are women obligated to hear the Megillah? It's also connected to time, it's only on Purim. The answer is because they're all part of the miracle. But what's interesting in this, the Yushayim write, that that's only said by a rabbinic mitzvah. In other words, seemingly, women should have to eat matzah because they're also part of the miracle. But they also went out of Egypt. They're also part of the miracle. But over there we don't say that. The Gemara has to learn it out from a Pasuk. So the Yushayim say, by a biblical mitzvah, we don't say that concept, they were also part of the miracle. By a rabbinic mitzvah, when the Chachamim instituted mitzvahs, so then the mitzvahs that women, even though it's connected to time that normally they wouldn't be obligated in, but the Chanak and Purim, they're obligated because they were part of the mi miracle. But for instance, Halal, which is a rabbinic mitzvah, they don't have to do. I mean, things like that, they don't have to do. What did you want to do? Where do we learn out from? No, it says it's a rabbinic mitzvah. The difference is, though, that candle lighting is for peace in the home, right? Shalom bayis. So really, the obligation is on the house, not on the woman. The obligation is on the house to light Shabbos candles. Because women are more home than the men, plus... They extinguished, Adamish by sinning, they extinguished the, the, the candle of the world. So therefore, they're the ones that light the candles. But if there's no woman, a man has to light uh, Shabbos candles. If the, in fact, in Allah, it says, what happens if the husband sees the woman's uh, not, not ready on time and is getting late? It says in Allah, that my husband should go light candles and not care about his wife screaming. Because it's already Shabbos, and you know it's going to be Shabbos. She won't be able to light. The Batchanik, the women are obligated now. What the custom is when there's a husband or there's men in the house, it's customary that the woman doesn't light, the men light, and she fulfills her obligation through that. But if there's no man in the house, a woman lives alone. She has to light Hanukkah candles. And the Gemara says, why? Because she was part of the miracle of Hanukkah. And then the Gemara says like this. If you light the candles of Hanukkah, you have to make a bracha. Like we know, you make a bracha. Not only that, but if you see a candle of Hanukkah and you're not going to be lighting on your own, that's the way the Mephoshim explain what the Gemara means, you also have to make a bracha. The Gemara is going to explain what that means. 
if it's the first day of Hanukkah. Hadoya, if you see the candles, and again, you're not going to light them at home yourself. Mevarech shtayim, you make two brachas. Sha'as and Nisim and Shachyonu. Vodoya umadlik, and the one that lights the candles, makes three brachas. Lahad l'kner. If you're not lighting, you can't say lahad l'kner, because you're not lighting. So if a guy sees on the first night of Hanukkah, and again, they're not going to be lighting at home, for whatever reason. They see a candle burning, they have to make two brachas. Sha'as and Nisim and Shachyonu. The one that lights the first night makes three brachas. The rest of Mekan ve'elach, madik mevardich shtayim v'reya mevardich achas. Okay? The lighter lights t- two brachas, you know, ladik ner and shas and nisim, and the guy that sees it only says one. What is the ma'imamayit? Which bracha do you leave out after the first day? So the Gemara says, ma'imayit man, you leave out shachion. So the Gemara says, ma'imayit nes, why need to leave out Shas and Nisim? Sigmar says, no. Kol Yema was a miracle. Every day was a... Kol Yema is a miracle. Ika. Okay? So now the Gemar says, my Mavarich. What is the bracha on Hanukkah candles? So the Gemar says like this. Sheikid Shana b'mitzvesa v'tzivanu l'had d'kned shal Hanukkah Another version in the Gemara is Hanukkah. Another interesting version of the Gemara is Shele Hanukkah, in one word. But the Bible, our custom is Ladek Ne'er Hanukkah. So the Gemara says, Ve'heichan Tzivanu. So now this is a question the Gemara is really asking in every rabbinic mitzvah. We're lighting Hanukkah, it's a rabbinic mitzvah. What is the bracha that Hashem commanded us to do? Where did Hashem command us to light Hanukkah? It's not in the Torah. So the Gemara answers two answers. Vehechen tzivanu. Where did Hashem command us to light the Hanukkah candle? So Rav Avya Oimer milay sasur. Rav Avya says because it says in the pasuk you're not allowed to turn away from anything the Chachamim tell you to do. That means the Torah says you have to, you're not allowed to not listen to the Chachamim. So when they say you have to light candles. The Torah is saying you have to light candles because Torah says you have to listen to them. Rav Nachem Yomar Shalav Vichav Yigad Vyagayt Chazkei Nachu Vyayim Ruloch. Okay, ask your fathers and they will tell you, and your elders and they will uh, tell you. So therefore, the Gemara learns out. So basically, it's interesting. The Gemara brings on a positive pasuk and a negative pasuk. First pasuk is Leisosu, which is biblical. It says the second one is also biblical. Shalav Vichav Yigad Ask your, for, your fathers and they will tell you. And your elders and they will tell you. Okay? The, the Rambam and all the Rishenim, when they bring down the, the, the halacha, they only bring down the Pasuk Leisosir. They don't bring down Shalavich of Yagetcha. So that means they maintain that's the main pr- reason why we do a bracha and any mitzvah the Rabbanin. In other words, you have the same question. You wash for bread. It's an Atilas Yadayim is a rabbinic mitzvah. Halel is a rabbinic mitzvah. Uh, Erevin is a rabbinic mitzvah. Halel is a rabbinic mitzvah, we said that. Uh, there's Shabbos, there's Hanukkah. All the other things uh, are all rabbinic mitzvahs. Megillah, well, any of the seven rabbinic mitzvahs. So why do you make a bracha on a rabbinic mitzvah? Because the Torah says you have to listen to the Chachamim. So therefore, when you do a biblical mitzvah, when you do a rabbinic mitzvah, you're actually doing what the Torah says to do. Right. But the fact that Hashem said to listen to the Chachamim, so Hashem is commanding us to listen whatever they said. So if they said to do something, then Hashem is, is, Hashem is commanding us to do it. It's a very interesting question. Uh, why do you buy Shabbos candles? Do we say Lahat Kner Shel Shabbos Kaidish or Shel Shabbos? And by Hanukkah we say Lahat Kner Hanukkah. Even though, and again, in the version of the Gemara it says Shel Hanukkah, and most many people make, but we only say Lahat Kner Hanukkah. So the reason is explained as follows: the difference between what. 
What did they say? Shel Hanukkah? Okay, whatever. Not only Chabad, the whole Hasidic world doesn't say Shel Hanukkah. A lot of people say Ladik Nech Hanukkah. Now, what's the difference between Shabbos candles? If you understand the difference between Shabbos candles and Hanukkah candles, you'll understand the reason. The purpose of Shabbos candles is to benefit from the light. Correct? It's the benefit from the light. Hanukkah. We're not allowed to use the light of Hanukkah, right? You're not allowed to use the light of Hanukkah candles. So therefore, Hanukkah candles, the candle is only the mitzvah. There's no benefit from the mitzvah, okay? So therefore, it's brought down like this. By Hanukkah, because you're not allowed to benefit from the candles, it's a ner Hanukkah. It's only for the mitzvah of Hanukkah, that's it. There's no benefit. Shel Shabbos means of Shabbos, that means it's Shabbos, but there's another thing that you can use it. Hanukkah emphasizes that the candle is only for the mitzvah of Hanukkah, you can't have side benefits from it. Shel Shabbos, Kedish, means it belongs to Shabbos, so yeah, it's for Shabbos, but you can also benefit. That's the reason why we say Shel Shabbos, Kedish, and Ladikner Hanukkah. What? One of the reasons why we have a shamus is in case you're benefiting from the light, it's considered as if you benefited from the shamus. But technically, you're right. You shouldn't sit in the dark for the time that the Hanukkah candle should be burning. You really shouldn't close the lights. Unless you're sitting and staring. Yeah, unless you're sitting and staring, you're not doing anything else. But for a Jew to sit and stare, they'll def inevitably eat and talk. <laughs> Jews don't sit there and stare. Rarely, unless the Jew is meditating. But usually a Jew, when he's sitting doing nothing, he eats. What? The shamas? No, if there's electricity on in the room, what do you have to relight it for? If there's no light, if there's no light in the room in the half an hour and the shamus goes out, yeah, you're supposed to relight the shamus. But normally you have a light. Today we live in a world with lights. <laughs>